Three, two, one. Attention, row. My legs, which had been locked, bent in anticipation, slammed down into the boat. No thoughts, just muscle memory. Lean back, sit up, brace with core, pull arms in, rotate wrists, click down, release arms, and swing. My hamstrings and quads work together, slowly, painfully fighting the momentum of the boat up the foot and a half of slide. One stroke down, one of 530 in the 3.2 mile race that is the head of the Charles Regatta. In many ways, crew has shaped me into the person I am today. It has taught me valuable lessons which have carried me beyond the river and well past my racing days. Most importantly, crew has instilled in me a sense of discipline and perseverance, unparalleled by any other experience in my life. One of my favorite memories with crew was racing in the head of the Charles Regatta in Boston, Massachusetts, two years ago. It is the largest two-day rowing event in the world. It is exhilarating and it is scary, and it is an experience I will never forget. Click, swish, click, swish, click, swish. The oars of eight bodies moving in perfect unison. The 60 foot shell slides underneath us, cutting through the autumn colored water of the Charles River. After the intense fury of motion at the start, our boat has focused and found its set and its heartbeat. We are two minutes into the race and only one-tenth done. The next 18 will push every physical, mental, and emotional limit of each girl in the boat as we fight to finish. The river bends and our coxswain calls on starboard side to double their exertion. My body responds like a machine. Three, four, five hard strokes, and we've rounded the first of four major bends in the river, which will force us past the physical capabilities we thought we had. Six minutes into the race, one third done, and my body begins to complain. An unpleasant, all over discomfort attacks my body and begs me not to push as hard the next stroke. The race is no longer a battle of pure physical strength. It takes mental investments. My mind begins to take control of my body and my discipline wills me on. 10 minutes into the race, my mind and body can no longer command my legs to work. To dig deep is a gross understatement. I have conditioned my body to respond to pain, but this is unlike any other pain I have ever embraced. The next eight minutes are confused and disorganized pain. Pain so excruciating it is numbing. No longer do I feel large needles being driven into my thighs or my forearms splitting. My hands are bleeding and frozen to my oar handle. My lungs are on fire, and sharp, cold air leaves the raw taste of blood in my throat. I cannot see. I cannot feel. I cannot breathe. I can only row. The last two minutes and 11 seconds of the race are fueled by heart. They are only made possible because of my teammates. I fight for every girl in that boat and I know each is fighting for me. This race has bound us together. We will only stop giving every ounce of ourselves after we have crossed the finish line. 20 strokes to go, then 15, then 10, each passing faster with the increased adrenaline in the boat. The pain is indescribable, and yet we embrace it as a badge of honor. With the last 10 strokes, the boat begins to sing through the water. 
The shell is lifted inches out of the water with each stroke so to barely skim the surface. My mind is blank. It is as if each of my senses is so acutely overloaded, I no longer can experience any of them. We cross the line. The air horn sounds, and my body loses all form. Each girl collapses into the boat. Place is irrelevant at this point. We have persevered, fought for each other, and that is enough.